People who have only fans, what is stopping you from upgrading to an air conditioner? Serious answer, a fan uses about one tenth the electricity. Yeah, our electric bill during summer is higher than winter, and we have a long cold winter, trying to manage when we let run the air conditioner and the fans, so we can save a bit of money without burning the hell our apartment can be. Pretty much the same situation here. Apartment is pretty big, and is in an old building with zero insulation. I tried air conditioning one summer and it literally doubled my electricity bill, which was already obscenely high. Winter we don't eat much, and wear warmer clothes, but summer, it gets suffocating, and my asthma flares up with the heat and humidity, so it's kind of a must. Winter is fine for me, more clothes or a blanket, but during the summer I can only get so naked. Proceeds to rip off Skinner finally. I'm Korean and I enjoy the thrill of electric fans. You just don't get that genuine life or death scenario with axe. Source. I've always wondered, does that apply to ceiling fans as well? Somehow I feel like they're safer, even though I don't think standing fans will kill you either. Edit, loving all the ceiling fan injuries, but I was wondering if the fear of dying from having a ceiling fan on exists in Korea, not about their actual danger. See I always have the fear that my ceiling fan whirling at the speed of sound might just fall off and crush me in the middle of the night. Have you ever replaced or installed a ceiling fan? They are not heavy enough to crush you. Especially if it's close enough in your bedroom that you can touch it when standing on the bed. It would be more of an oof situation, haha. <laughs> Probably some bruising. Maybe some cuts from glass breaking, assuming it has lights. I'd imagine that your comforter slash sheets would mostly protect from that though. The likelihood that it'd fall is so slim as to be non-existent though. Here's why, the wires are usually enough to hold it, especially if solid core copper wire, like, is typically used for the grounding wire, and there's also usually a thing type depends on the fan, that will hold it up there, while you're hooking up the wires. If the fan fell it'd get, caught on that pre-wiring hook slash ball holder thing, before it fell on you. I used to have aircon, but then I switched to only using fan as it really helps me wake up better in the morning. My mouth is less dry, and it makes waking up easier too, since I won't drag my waking up from being too comfy. Terrible rationalization. I prefer to be uncomfortable, so I do not sleep well thus I wake up no problem. It's actually not, just poorly explained. Our bodies are conditioned to sleep when it gets colder and naturally wake up when it's warmer. This is why people generally sleep better in the cold. It's probably also why trying to wake up in a freezing room with an accu feel a lot more groggy than if the temperature naturally increased overnight. I mean sometimes the breaker on my ac randomly trips at just the right time, and I end up waking up in the perfect temperature. Well, on my home planet, planet Earth, the temperature generally decreases at night. The temperature doesn't start to rise until the sun comes up. So, where I'm from, the temperature naturally increases starting near dawn and naturally decreases overnight. The fan chops up the oxygen molecules and makes it more easier for me to suck em down. Edit, a silver for this comment. Thank you. I feel like that in pretty woman. Everybody gangster until three oxygen atoms bond back and create ozone that enters your lungs. Ozone is a quantum chemical the third O atom simultaneously travels up each nostril, unless you observe it, in which case its wave function collapses, and, if it's in your nasal passages you get a cold, in your lungs you get l- TB if it's O18, and leukemia if it is observed in the blood, possibly. Hold on, can you explain this in layman's terms please? I thought I did, here is the LE5, the sciencing is a bit simplified. OOO is a weird chemical made of three letter O's. They like to hang out together. If you breathe it in, one of the O's goes up the left nostril, one up the right nostril, and this is the weird bit, the third one goes up both nostrils at the same time. It's only if you look at it with a special machine probably called an ozonomnometer, that the third O decides where it is. This is where it's determined how ill the ozone will make you. If it's in your nose, you get a cold, in your chest you can get lung
or tuberculosis, or leukemia if it is found in your blood. HTH. Since I rent there's not really a good place to put an air conditioner. Fans are more flexible, and get the job done pretty well. I bought a mobile lac unit, but really it's a pain in the setup. It's loud and it takes at least an hour to make a noticeable difference. It's one of the main reasons why I want to own a house one day. Portable acts suck. Window units are the bomb. Yes, unfortunately they only work with that sliding type of window, which practically don't exist here in Germany. Ours pretty much all open like doors, with a hinge on one side and a handle on the other. When I was in college, the cost. I lived in North Carolina in a tiny 4th floor apartment with no ack. Temperatures regularly reached over 100 degrees outside in the summer but it even was hotter inside. When things got really bad I'd lie on the floor next to my fan and look at pictures of window air conditioners online, but I couldn't commit to buying one, plus I wasn't sure how it would affect my electricity bill. Once I graduated, got a full time job, and moved, my top requirement for a new apartment was that it must have ack. Now my bill is a little higher, but I don't question the meaning of life all summer while lying in a pool of sweat. Edit. Also I do get the joke, I just wanted to share how happy I'm with my current act situation. We are about to move. Our central unit has been on the fritz since we moved in here 6 years ago. My brother-in-law probably comes out 2 to 3 times a year to charge it up, and we decided not to have him out after this year's first warm front. We signed a contract about a month and a half ago on a house that comes with a much newer rack unit already installed, put in 3 years ago. It was still kind of cool down here, and we decided, no matter how hot it got, since we were moving anyway, we could fight through it. I can deal with hot and dry, but this hot and humid we have right now is pretty hard. We are in south slash central Texas. Only 4 more days though. Some people live in buildings that do not allow window units, like dorms. I have stayed in places, in Boston, where there was no central account and standalone room units were provided. These are some major disadvantages 1, they are loud. As in even though the unit is in another room I still need to turn the TV way up loud too. You need to constantly check how much water is in the trap 3. They aren't small. About the size of a big suitcase. Most won't fit under the bed. I actually have a serious answer for this. My house is super old which means that my windows are the wrong size for portable or window air conditioners. And there are number 3 pronged outlets within 50 feet of the windows. And I'm renting. So not about to spend a bunch of money putting central air in my upstairs area. Thankfully, downstairs has central air, so it's only upstairs that I have to be creative with. Currently it's a mix of box fans, swamp cooler, and dehumidifier, so we'll see how it does with them as a re-summer. Yeah, I know my username says I'm from Colorado. I moved after I made this account. Username checks out. Design of my house's living room, dining room are so open that one single act can't cover the whole space. And multiple act obviously are insufficient. Bedroom, there is a thing called white noise, and electrical fans have those white noise which brings me to sleep much easier and deeper, you know, just because I've grown up with electrical fans. Another reason is that, act makes air dry. My oily skin doesn't like dry air, and my throat and nose don't like dry cold air as well. Combination of poverty and nomadic lifestyle. I used fans in college and early days of adulthood, because I couldn't afford an air conditioner, and was living in housing, that didn't have ack, and wasn't worth my investment to upgrade, because I knew I'd be moving soon. When fans are your only choice, you get used to it pretty quick. It's really not that bad. It all depends on where you live. I'm in a fairly remote location with little asphalt near me so the temps are fairly manageable at night, except a few nights each year when it is 90 deg point F. I can deal with that. When I lived in a city 10 miles away, I needed the ack because the building and surrounding parking lot and streets would retain so much heat that it would be unbearable. I have also perfected my fan system. I have one exhaust window fan at one end of my house near the stove, and one intake window fan in the bedroom. 
All other windows are closed, unless it's really nice out. Once the sun goes down, both fans are turned on and that displaces all the air in my house in about 30 minutes. Turn them off in the morning and close the windows, to retain that night air. Plus they are much cheaper to run. I live in a state, that is cool slash cold most of the year. Summers get warm, but most of the summer isn't bad. We have to suck it up, and endure hot humid weather maybe 14 days total. Frankly it's not worth the effort of window units or the expense of installing a whole house unit. For those miserable days, the worst part is sleeping. So we've learned tricks like a cold shower right before bed, and wearing a slightly damp t-shirt with a fan blowing right on us. It works. But to be honest, for super hot draughty summers where the heat goes on for weeks, we have broken down and put a tiny window unit in the bedroom. Weeks of no sleeping makes for cranky people. That doesn't happen often. I grew up pre-air conditioning. If you plant a big tree in the southwestern corner of your house to shade the house strategically during the hottest part of the day, that's step one. Step 2 is to open your windows at night, when it's cool out, then close them, before it gets hot in the morning, this seals the cooler air into the house. I did this in the 1990s and people always thought I had air conditioning. Of course there are always a few days, when it doesn't cool down at night. The easiest way to cool down in that case, is to have a wet head, put a wet towel over your head, etc. Most of the time I didn't even use a fan. Seriously though. Let's start loving ourselves more. If AC will make you feel good, good. If you feel more good from using 10% of the energy, and being a little sweaty, also good. Personally, I like it warm, but my friends sure do appreciate me turning on the AC when they come to visit. Seeing my friends happy brings me more joy than a slight variation in my personal comfort. This post is so ripe with punnery and wordplay. As my good friend, David Sedaris once said the spoken word is like a key to the now for real though, like WTF. Can't believe this. Took me 5 minutes after I read the post to get that it was a play on words. I can't tell if it was because either I'm that stupid or was that tired or the question was just that dumb or clever, like WTF. The first step would be to determine if your blower motor still operates. This is easily known by putting your hand up to any supply vent, vents that push out air into your home. If this is the case, then it's a good bet that the levels of Freon, also known as coolant, refrigerant, etc., in your your air conditioner are not where they should be. Occasionally, you could have an air conditioner that has too much Freon, which is causing your system to freeze up, but more than likely you do not have enough Freon circulating through your system, which is causing your air conditioner not to produce cold conditioned air to your home. It is a common misconception that every so often, one must add a little more coolant to your system, not unlike topping of the oil in your car. But this notion is false. The coolant in your air conditioner system actually operates in a closed loop, meaning there is never a need to add more coolant. Unless there is a leak. Leaks are caused by holes, sometimes as small as a pinhole located anywhere where the refrigerant circulates. The size of the hole determines how long it takes for the Freon, which is actually a gas, to slowly leak out of your system. If the leak is small, it may take years for the system to lose enough Freon to where your air conditioner is noticeably not producing enough cool air in your home. Large holes will ensure the refrigerant leaks out much faster. Sometimes charging up a system and spending hundreds of dollars to do so is the wrong approach, as the Freon will only leak out days sometimes weeks after it has been recharged. It's always important to have a professional HVAC technician determine where the leak is occurring and how large the leak is before regarding your system. I remember years ago doing a battery of push-ups in my living room directly under my ceiling fan. I jumped to my feet to go grab a bottle of water and no sooner than I stepped away from where I was doing push-ups, the ceiling fan fell out of the ceiling and crashed to the floor right where I was doing push-ups. I bought a standalone air conditioning unit for my room. 
Firstly, the information on the web page was incorrect and didn't specify the room dimensions of the unit correctly. So I bought a unit more powerful than I should have, one that was cycling far too often. Secondly, the noise was truly ridiculous. I thought I could get used to it, I really could not. So, I returned the unit and only use fans now. I live in rented accommodation so can't make any alterations. The house is a Victorian mid-terrace so wouldn't support the infrastructure for central air conditioners anyway, so we'd be looking at window units which are ugly and a pain in the ass. Also in Britain it only gets uncomfortably warm for a few weeks a year, so most of the time it wouldn't be worth it. The apartment I live in now is not one I will stay for long, so it's not worth it. My next apartment is the one I hope to stay in for most of my life, and damn right I'll install Ack in there. We don't have that many hot weeks here in Belgium, but the few weeks where it's hot, having Ack is a blessing. I mean it's not like during winter you'd go a few weeks without eating either would you? They are expensive. Even like ones that roll out of the box with no pro install, are like $500 for a base model. But we gonna have to- Last summer was brutal. We live in a place where you could maybe get by. The summers aren't that long but now. The real heat may only last 3 weeks, but that 3 weeks snack is officially a necessity says I. We were gonna try and get one over the winter, so we weren't paying peak prices, but, yeah we just kept putting it off. Walmart sells some for like 200. Yeah if you want one that barely covers 100 sqf. They aren't that big, but they do help lol. I had to run three last summer in Ga, and not only did they work better than my actual unit, but they were cheaper, electric went down, we are looking at the kind that roll. The whole unit is inside. And has an exhaust pipe that mounts to a window. One like that, that can cool half the house, we will be lucky if we can get one under $500 lol. Especially in summer. We'll talk, the energy cost. I've been trying to just chill with a fan for the spring and it's been nice so far. Window units actually aren't that bad. I had to run 3 when my unit gave out during last summer and my bill actually went down using the 3 windows vs the main unit. Well unfortunately the ones I live with tend to keep the doors open with the ACK running most of the time, so it goes up. Energy efficiency. I have a tiny USB fan that makes next to no noise, while still having an ok airflow, it's not a big fan, but w slashy. It's quite handy, because if it's hot in summer I can leave it on all night, and have a tiny yet constant breeze that makes swamp pits and stuff go away or at least just a bit more bearable. If it gets intolerable I put my feet in a bucket of water, or have a wet cloth on my head, although this tends to drip around the place, so it is a suboptimal solution. But yeah, if I'm having trouble I use the tiny fan, and it's quite nice. Got a mobile one in my bedroom, but I can't install a fixed unit, because my landlord doesn't allow it. Also the placing wouldn't be easy, because I live in an older town in Germany and the Denkmal shuts monument protection, says that you can't alter the appearance. If I can do home office most of the time, after corona is gone, I'll change all that and search a new apartment or house with aircon, but right now, I'm just not allowed to, and the mobile ones aren't enough for my living room. I have two fans and use them for only two things, giving a breeze of air to my plants, and cooling down my feet in the heat of summer nights. I don't back quote t no why, but in summer my feet get so hot I literally can back quote t sleep. Rest of my body is fine. So I place a fan to blow air to only my feet. An air conditioner just seems like a bit too much. I do have air conditioner in my room, but I'm not really fond of using it. Like, for me, if it is hot, why would I use it and lay a blanket over me because it is too cold? That doesn't make a lot of sense to me, since that defeated the purpose of hiring an air conditioner cooling you. Yes I tested with multiple setting, and found out the lowest possible fit me. Plus, it is way too costly to just use for one person anyway. We have a boiler heating system. To put in ACK we had to use the split system, where there are units in various rooms, and then the fan condenser thingy outside. Very expensive. We finally after 8 years of no ack we installed that, and a new boilers, 
since it was from mid 90s. And I tell you what I give zero FFFFS about running that act when it's hot. Americans seem to have this massive act guilt, but we aren't in that crowd. Although I misread this, and thought it was a joke about amateur I hate air conditioning. I do have it in my home, only recently installed actually, a compromise with my wife. I prefer fans, if I'm hot, but generally I'm not. I'm always very cold, and have a much lower threshold for cold tolerance than anyone I know, if it is below 75 ish I'm uncomfortable, ideally I like it in the mid 80s or so at night, and frankly in the day I couldn't care less how hot it gets, when it's over 110 I don't want to go outside, and be in the sun, don't get me wrong. But I'm not miserable, and I would rather have a fan blowing fresh air around to cool me, rather than get blasted with uncomfortably cold air. In S Florida it's essential and goes unquestioned. Anywhere or anyone that doesn't have AC is completely foreign to me, and if we are in a car W slash OAC then the windows are open for sure, I couldn't imagine being without. Just the way it is. Heaters, on the other hand, somewhat baffle me. In super cold temps, like 40-50, we might turn it up to 60, but even this is rare, all temps are in F, sorry. Back in 1968 my dad put in central air. We were window fans before that. He only allowed the air to be turned on when he got home from work. Air conditioning was super expensive to own with the amount of electricity it took. I remember mom complaining one month it was $150. In context my 2000 square feet home in August is $178. The home was about 500 square foot smaller. So yeah air conditioning was super expensive most people only had air conditioners in the living room using a window air conditioner. In the 53 years, brought better insulation and efficiency in air conditioners and furnaces. Air conditioners have huge upfront costs, and are expensive to maintain, and just generally more expensive day in and day out. Plus you're committed to the same air conditioner for a decade or two until they finally wear out one day in the middle of summer. Four pennies a day the fan serves most of the same purpose. And they are cheap so, if you're bored with it, or want a different style you just go get a new one. Not to mention you can have more than one fan going at the same time as opposed to just the one air conditioner. I mean honestly a fan doesn't do everything an air conditioner, and while you won't feel quite as comfortable with the fan mostly the end result is the same. A lot of my windows are the casement's wing out kind, and can't hold an air conditioner. Central air installation and unit is expensive. I do have a pool, that I don't eat, which is refreshing. But honestly, where I live it's usually about 2 weeks, that are over 90 degrees and it's manageable. I can see needing it, if you have significantly more than that. You all are spoiled. I live in Norway and AC isn't common, or considered essential at all, here. Air to air heat exchange is a popular among those who can afford it, though. I would love to get one as it's a nice investment, that will save a lot of money on heating, and would also help with humidity and allergies. However, the apartment I own, is part of a co-op, and modifying the outside of the building isn't allowed, can't even put up a satellite dish on your 12m2 balcony, not that I want one. We have cable included. That I hardly ever use. Because internet, lol. The co-op will vote on a common roof mounted system for everyone in the future, but we had to upgrade our common garbage facilities, or be denied service, and now have to tear down every single bathroom, to replace all the plumbing between the floors, and that's going to take all saved up co-op funds and increase the rent a bit, so it's gonna be a couple of years, I suppose. This is the end of the video, thank you guys for staying with me till the end. If you enjoyed watching this, you might as well watch these two.